It's, it's the, the Tour, Tour de, de Mont Blanc. Blanc. Yes. We're about halfway round now. We started in La Houche, went over the Col de Tricot, down to the town of Contaminines, over the Col de Bonhomme, and stayed at the Refuge de Bonhomme, down to Champex. Over the Col de Seine, and down to Cotamayer. We stayed a couple of nights in Cotamayer. Then over to the refugee Elena. From Elena, we're going to make our way back to our starting point at La Houche. Now we're going to be heading north and then eventually turning south to back where we started from. From Refugio Elena, we're going to go over the Grand Col Ferret, drop down to La Folle, and then on to Champex. And then on to Trient, over the Col de Boulogne, to Argentia, on to Le Flagir, and then the final uh, peak, Col de Brabant, and all the way down back to La Houche. Well, today we'll be going from the Elana hut, and we'll be heading to Foley. So from the Elena Hut we go over the Col Ferret and then we drop down uh, through La Pole and along to Ferret and on to the village of La Folle. Oh well, we'll be leaving the Elana Hut and uh, the weather today is a mixture of cloud and sun quite cool though since we're quite high up and we'll be going even higher to 8,300 feet as we go across the pass. Looking back down the valley that we followed yesterday and then looking over at Mount Greta and then uh, Mount Dolent. top of the pass as we move from Italy into Switzerland. The descent is through these luscious green pastures that the cattle and other animals are brought up to graze during the summer months. It's uncanny how these mountain huts just seem to pop up when it's lunchtime, so we stop at the Alpage de la Poule. Pleasant walk down the valley to La Folle, where we'll be staying for the night. At dinner time, Barry became intrigued by an innovative napkin holder, and as all engineers do, started analyzing the structure and dynamics of it. Busily sketching out the key components and calculating the weight of the base, CG location, allowable height of the napkin stack, ball weight and spring constant. Bruce countering with a more in-depth mathematical analysis, Ivor pondering the spring constant and bending moment and Ed, ah yes, Ed, was in management. So Fran, any comments? Hey, I just wanted a <laughs> napkin. Not Einstein's theory of hand wipes. Now comes the time to put theory to the test. Barry approaches the napkin holder, whips out a napkin, and... I guess it's back to the drawing board. And it's time to hit the sack. Today we're hiking from La Folle to Champex. So it's a fairly easy walk, fairly easy day as we walk down the valley and then with a final uphill at the end of the day to Champex. No need for an alarm clock 
as the sheep pass by heading for uh, a new pasture time to boot up and head out Judging by all the rubble in the riverbed, it must be quite a strong current in the spring runoff. Negotiating a bit of a slide here. Passing through the pretty little hamlet of Praz de Fort. Oh. Fran picked up uh, some fresh strawberries here. Please, Fran, give me a strawberry. In the afternoon, our trail walk was enlivened by a whole host of beautifully carved wooden sculptures. Uh, just a couple more miles to uh, go. Wow, has Fran picked up the pace? We arrived at uh, Hotel Alpina, where we'll be staying uh, two nights. This was going to be one of the best places we stayed at. It was great food, we had our own apartment, had a deck with a beautiful view out over the mountains. Yeah, this was going to be a bit of a layback day. Just spend our time walking around the town and the lake and the adjoining mountains. Some Edelweiss, symbol of Switzerland of course, and it didn't take us long to sniff out the local bakery and uh, jump right in with all of those delectables. As the evening set in, time to cook up the little guy in a stew. Today we're going to head from Champex to Trient. And we start off. Pleasant walk right down the valley. And um, over the Jur. And down to the Col de la Forclaise. And then down to the town of Trient. Well, another beautiful day. Can't believe our luck with the weather. I don't think we've had a bad day uh, at all so far. We are not obsessed with wood piles, but we did have to stop and uh, look at these cute goats. Came across these spotted nutcrackers hanging out.
Well, we've gained some altitude. Negotiating a bit of a rock slide here. Yeah, another recent rockfall. Don't stay in this area. And then we can see the town below of Trient where we're heading. Today we're going to be hiking from Trient to Argentia. We start off a gradual walk and anytime the zigzags we're climbing. So we climb up over the Col de Balm and then uh, drop down and make our way along to Argentia. Yeah, not far to the top of the pass now. Some old cow sheds. And um, when we get to the top here, we'll be passing from Switzerland back into France. Yeah, it's all downhill for the rest of the day and we get our first glimpse uh, in the distance of the Chamonix Valley which is our destination eventually in the next couple of days. So now we get to check out Friends Hidden Skills. Did I mention this was for beers? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> One more time, I didn't get a picture. This is where this is where long ski poles are really good. We arrive in Argentia, beautiful uh, flowers all over the place and a uh, great place to stay. Today the hike takes us from Argentia to uh, Chamonix 
Okay, we're going to climb out of Argentier and the trail is on the opposite side of the valley to Mont Blanc range. And then once we have gained altitude, the trail can contours along and it's called the Grand Balcony. And then finally, we will drop down uh, into Chamonix. We stop by the local shop, get some lunch, and we're ready to uh, head up hill. Well, almost. Well, we're looking across at the jagged peaks of Laid Right, the Aguil Vert, and the Drew. It's uh, another beautiful day, some dramatic clouds uh, passing over there. And then uh, once we've gained uh, altitude, we're basically contouring along. Yeah, the Mardig glacier coming into view now. This is one of the more major glaciers in this area and you can see how dramatic it has receded with the ice now just visible back around the corner. Yeah, wash time. We are now above Chamonix and you can see the ridge on the far side which is where we hiked the first day when we arrived in Chamonix. Paragliding is a big sport in this valley. You know, the riders come up on the cable car, get uh, to the launching platforms and then just basically take off and uh, ride the thermals. For us, we're going to take the cable car down to Chamonix where we'll be staying the night. In the town, we came across these solar powered electric bikes that were touring around uh, France. Sort of interesting configuration. We had a pleasant hotel with a patio overlooking the river. Today is the final day where we leave Chamonix and go back to La Rouge, which was our starting point. Well, we take the cable car back up to where we left off the trail yesterday and then climb up to the high point, Le Brevant, at 8,300 feet and then uh, cruise all the way down to La Rouge. Another beautiful day and we set off and uh, can see the Brabant high up above us and then we um, reach the Col de Brabant still some lingering snow fields to cross and then a few ladders to climb and we're on the top of the Brabant at 8,000 feet we start our long descent uh, which will eventually end up at La Rouge. We're still following the Grand Balcony. And it's from this side of the valley that you get the most magnificent views of Mount Blanc.
We arrive at the uh, refuge de Belchat, which is right opposite Mount Blanc. From here, it's as if you can almost reach out and touch it. The scenery is just magnificent. One of the old style continental water closets. You can see the trail as we start our long descent into La Houche. Yeah, from La Houche we get the train back into Chamonix. This is our last day with friend, so we enjoyed a pleasant end of the trip dinner. We saw us saying our goodbyes. That evening, Chamonix was hosting the World Climbing Wall Championships and thousands of people were crammed in the square watching at night. Having completed the TMB, we had decided to travel over to Zermatt by train and take a look at the Matterhorn. This is a very scenic ride, with the train able to engage a rack and pinion on steep sections of track. The interesting thing about Zermatt is it's a motorized vehicle free town. We didn't realize that we'd have a welcoming party when we arrived in Zermatt. Zermatt turned out to be a pretty touristy area. Yeah, Barry found a place to kip though, but I'll uh, wake him up rolling this stone down there. Walter Bonatti uh, is revered as one of the world's greatest climbers. And remember we passed a hut named after him on the TMB. And Edward Wimper, the English mountaineer, best known for the first ascent of the Matterhorn in 1865. Lucy Walker, a Liverpool UK lass, yay, was, first, uh, was the first woman to summit the Matterhorn in 1871. Her other early accomplishments were the first female ascents of the Eiger, Wetterhorn and Balhorn. As we are in Zermatt for two nights, we took a day hike, take a closer look at uh, the Matterhorn at 14,600 feet. I believe these are Chamonix. Interesting old wooden houses. I believe these flat stones are to deter mice. In the woods, we came across this tunnel. Was this the large Hadron Collider Bruce had been seeking all this time?
Well, enough of that frivolity. We cross the gorge on this spectacular suspension bridge. <laughs> no, <Nope>, Mary Poppins. <laughs> well, after a nice day hiking around, we headed back to the town for our evening meal. One last look at the Matterhorn before we board the train for Geneva and just passing Lake Geneva here. We were to spend the night in Geneva before getting the plane on the following day. It's the famous fountain on the lake in the old town. Finally, Bruce got to go to CERN, yeah, where the large Halron Collider is located. CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research, and it houses the large Halron Collider, which is 300 feet underground in a 17-mile circum uh, circumference tunnel. And then uh, what they do is they arrange subatomic particles, usually protons, and accelerate close to the speed of light in opposite directions and then smashed into each other. They break apart and the quarks and gluons come spilling out forming a shower of hadrons. This led to the confirmation of the Higgs boson in uh, 2012. This is a piece of pensioned off copper radio frequency accelerator that was used in 1989 and uh, this sculpture depicts the great discoveries in physics. Time to uh, go board a plane and head back to the USA. And we're homeward bound. Thanks for coming along on the TMB with us from Ed, Bruce, Barry, myself, Ivor, and of course, our fearless leader friend. <laughs>